Okay, so welcome to lesson number two, absolute functions and reciprocal functions. Uh, so today, what we're going to do is look at how to solve absolute value functions using a graph or how to solve them algebraically. Now, the first method we're going to look at is using the graphing calculator. And when using the graphing calculator, using our intersection method. Now, this is something that uh, you should be used to, used to seeing. We've done this before with other types of functions and equations, and uh, it's using the exact same principles. Now, the second method we're going to look at is the x-intercept method, which again is something that you've seen before. Now, what you need to know is how to type these absolute value functions into your calculator. The first thing you need to do is obviously you need to learn or you need to know what the absolute value function is and how to input it. So if we were if we're using the equation, if we're solving the equation, the absolute value of 2x plus 3 is equal to 8. And if we're going to use the intersection method, what we need to do is input the absolute value of 2x plus 3 into y1. And to do that, we're going to go to, well, first of all, at the normal procedure, you go to your y equals. And then from here, you want to choose an absolute value bracket. And to do that, you go to math. You, you click the math button right here, right underneath alpha. So I click that, and I move over to number. Okay, So I moved over to the right one, and I choose this very, very first option, which is an absolute value bracket. Okay, So absolute value bracket, and then I just type in my, my uh, equation, 2x plus 3. And then I close that bracket, and that's the first part of my equation done. 2x plus 3 and absolute value of 2x plus 3. Now, y2, I'm going to, I'm going to uh, set it equal to 8, and then all I do is graph. And there is our function. Now, what we need to, what we need to do is we need to find out where the x-coordinates is of the points where they intersect at uh, 8, so up here. We want to find out what these two points are. And so in order to find out what those are, I'm going to use my intersection feature. So we go second function, trace intersect and you're gonna you have to click on the first curve and the second curve and then guess where that intersection point is and it looks like it's there at 2.5 okay so I have one of my values at x is equal to 2.5 and I have one over here as well and that should be a negative value so let's see what that's gonna be so same thing intersection feature and we got to go to our first curve over here so I'm going to call that my first curve enter it here my second curve there and then I got to guess where that is and we're at negative 5.5 so I have two values of x 2.5 and negative 5.5 all right and if what if we were to put this on the graph um, what this is going to look like is we have one at about here, it's negative 5.5, and one here at 2.5. And it looks like if we, if we look down at our graph, uh, let's see the value when we are when x is equal to. Oh, well, down here, it looks like we're at uh, 1.5 anyways. Okay, so that's what the graph, what your graph should look like. And also remember that it is crossing at the, at 8. And so these points should actually be up here more. <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay, so that's, that's kind of what your graph should look like. Now, let's look at the second method of solving, which is the x-intercept method. To solve the equation 2x plus 3 is equal to 8, absolute value of 2x plus 3 is equal to 8, by the zero method, use the following procedure. So we're going to rearrange the original equation, which was um, up here, 2x plus absolute value of 2x plus 3 is equal to 8. We are going to rearrange that by bringing the 8 to the other side and equating this to 0. Okay, so we, now we have uh, the absolute value of 2x plus 3 minus 8 is equal to 0. And all we do is we, we put this equation into my y1. 
So I'm going to do that up here. I'm going to just leave that same and add that subtract 8. And we're going to graph that. Okay, now that we've seen that, now we can see that that's shifted our graph. And what we want to do is find out where the zeros are on the calculator. So we're going to, we're going to use the zero feature. And we're going to input these zeros. So same thing that you've done using when we were doing quadratics. And we're going to get the same values of x is equal to 2.5. And using the zero function again, we're going to find this side here. And if you want to take a guess, it should be negative 5.5, right? So let's see. And yes, it is negative 5.5. Okay, so there are our values of x again. They are exactly the same. And uh, this graph looks something like this, that negative 5.5 and negative 2.5 here. And then we're down here. <coughs> okay, so this is what our graph looked like, something like that. Okay, so that's pretty straightforward using the gra the graphing calculator to uh, to solve these equations. Now what we want we want to do is um, just a couple more examples. <clears throat> so again, we're doing this on the calculator, and all I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my y equals again and type this equation in. Okay, so I have the absolute value of three plus x. And I am going to use my, um, my y-intercept method, or my intersection method. Okay, so on this side, on y2, I'm going to input my equation 2x plus 1, and then I'm going to graph this. And what you're going to see is two different lines, and what we want to, what we want to determine is where these lines intersect. Okay, so using the, the intersect method, I'm going to choose these two different curves. So that's my first curve, my second curve. My guess is going to be somewhere up here, and we are intersecting at x is equal to 2. But before we do that, what we should do is uh, draw what this, what this graph actually looks like. Okay, so um, looks like that. Well, I'm at 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3. Okay, so that's good. And we are crossing at... 2 and 5. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 2. This is where we are crossing. And so this is what my my graph looks like. And then my other line, so this was the my absolute value function of y is equal to 3 plus x. Absolute value of 3 plus x. And then my second line was um, 2x plus 1 and so that looks like something like this okay so this is y is equal to 2x plus 1 now when we fit when we figured out what the intersection was we got a value of x is equal to 2 that's where the two graphs intersect with each other now let's look at this next one. What we're, what we're going to have here is if you if you remember what this looks like, something like that. That's a that's a quadratic equation, right? And so if we have the absolute value of a quadratic equation, what we should see here are four different values given to us for x. Now we plug it in the exact same way. We choose our absolute value, and I should I'm going to put that up top there. We choose our absolute value. And I have x squared minus 17, close that bracket, and that's equal to 8. Okay, so what we're going to have here is something that looks kind of like a w. Okay, so I'm going to zoom out just so you can see that w shape. And then I'm going to zoom back in to figure out, to see what those, uh, what the intersection is going to be. Okay, so I'm going to zoom back in now, back to my standard shape graph. And I'm going I'm to find out where this crosses my line at 8. Okay, so I know that y is going to equal 8 here. <clears throat> so if this is 10 up here, that means 8 is going right through here. That's y equals 8. 
and then I have my um, my graph and it looks like that's at one two uh, one two three four so one two three four and same thing over here and I want to see where that's going to intersect so let's let's take a look second function trace my intersections are going to be at what you need to do first of all is find out where your curve is okay so let's find out that curve and then my second curve guess okay so one of them is going to be at three so if this is at three I know that that's the this is the same distance but on the opposite side so this since this is positive three we know that this is going to be negative 3, right? Because it's on the other side. So it's positive 3 here. It must be negative 3 on this side. So I'm going to have plus or minus 3. And then over here, um, looks like I'm going to have plus or minus 5. So second function trace. Again, find out what the intersection is there. First curve, second curve, guess. And yeah, it's going to be at plus or minus 5 because it's going to be same distance away over on this side as well okay and so what this looks like is uh, it's gonna be something like this and this and this and this and so uh, like we had a minimum up here or sorry a maximum up there and so this is what the graph looked like something like that okay the next thing I want to do so uh, if you need to pause the video at all, make sure you go ahead and do that. Um, but the next thing we're going to do is we're going to think about how to solve these problems algebraically. Okay, so let's look at this class example number two. So Alan has started to solve the equation two, absolute value of 2x plus 3 is equal to 8 using the steps on the previous page. Complete Alan's work and check the solution with the graphical solution on page 457. Okay, so uh, all we're looking for is the first page, and we want to see if we get the same answer here. But if I want to solve this algebraically, remember that all this, this, all this means, absolute value, is the distance of a number on, uh, on the number line. The distance from zero on a number line. And what we have, if we were to set this equal to zero, 2x plus 3 equals 0, what we're going to get here is our domain, right? And so if I want to figure out my domain and solve for x, I'm going to get 3 is equal to negative, and you can't see that. So 3 is equal to negative 2x if I subtract the 2x on this side and bring it over here. And if I solve for x, x is going to be equal to negative 3 over 2. Okay, so this is where this comes from. That's the, that's the domain of our solution. So when I'm solving this, what I want to do is, you know, just, I, I'm using the same basic algebraic principles that I would use for any other question. Now when I have the absolute value sign here, remember that if we're solving for this side of our domain, so x is less than negative 3 over 2, then all we're doing is switching the sign and making this into a, a negative number. So what this is going to be is negative 2x minus 3 is equal to 8. If we solve um, for x, I got to bring the 3 to the other side. That's going to be negative 2x is equal to 11. Now I need to divide by 2. x is going to be equal to negative. If I'm divided by negative 2, it's going to be negative 11 over 2. Okay. Now, on the other side, on the flip side here, I'm solving for x again. But remember that when we are uh, working with the absolute value, we're, we're working on either side of the number line here. Okay, so I have my domain at negative three to negative three halves, and on the one side, it should be a positive number. And so, if I'm solving for x again, I'm going to have two x is equal to five. I get five by subtracting three from this side and subtracting 3 on this side as well. And when I solve for x, I'm going to value of x is equal to 5 over 2, or 5 halves. All right, now what they wanted us to do was compare it to the previous solution. Now, if I look at um, this, this solution over here, I had x is equal to 2.5 and negative 5.5 for this. But remember that this 
that 2.5 is the same as 5 over 2, and negative 5.5 .5 is the same as negative 11 over 2, right? So uh, we're looking at 5 over 2 and negative 11 over 2. Exact same thing. So this solution would check out once we solve it algebraically. So x is equal to negative 11 over 2, and it is also equal to 5 over 2. Or we could say negative 5.5 and 2.5. Okay, uh, another way we can determine whether or not this is true is if we think about <coughs> is if we think about where these lie in relation to our domain. Remember that our subdomain is x is x has to be less than negative 3 over 2. And so negative 11 over 2 is certainly less than negative 3 over 2. And our, on our subdomain on the other side, x must be greater than or equal to negative 3 over 2. And again, our, our solutions check out. Okay, so that's one way we can, we can solve this algebraically. There is another way we can solve, solve this, though. And at times, there's not necessarily going to be two solutions. Now, for this question, Haley solved the equation absolute value of 3 plus x is equal to 2x plus 1. Complete Haley's work and compare the solution with the one from class example number 1a. So we're actually going to compare it to this example here where we want to get a value of x is equal to 2. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is go ahead and solve this algebraically. If I'm solving this algebraically, I'm going to have, um, well, on the one side of my subdomain, if my subdomain is uh, 3 plus x is equal to 0, if I'm solving for x, x is going to be negative 3. Then this side must be less than negative 3, where this side must be equal to or greater than negative 3. Okay, so if I'm solving, if I'm solving this, it's going to be negative 3 plus or negative 3 plus x bracket is equal to 2x plus 1. And if I'm bringing this negative sign inside, that's going to become negative 3 minus x is equal to 2x plus 1. Now, when I bring this x to this side, I'm going to have 3x. And if I bring this one to this side, I'll have negative 4. If I'm solving for x, I'm dividing 3, I'm dividing negative 4 by 3, which would give me x is equal to negative 4 over 3. Now, let's, let's see here. That was not one of the solutions in our original question, so let's see what's going on on the other side. So over here, I have the absolute value of 3 plus x, and that is equal to 2x plus 1. Now, if we're solving for this... Uh, for this equation, we can just get rid of the absolute value brackets and then add together our like terms. So if I get, if I bring this one over here, uh, that's going to subtract one from both sides, which leaves me with two. If I subtract x from both sides, that's just going to leave me with x, and that tells me that x is equal to two, which was indeed the case in our original solution. Now, our final solution is only going to be x is equal to 2. Now the reason being is if I plug this x back into my original equation of um, absolute value 3 plus x is equal to 2x plus 1, I'm going to get, if I substitute 2 back into the equation, 3 plus 2 is 5, and that is equal to 2 times 2, which is 4 plus 1, which is 5. So if that will tell us that 5 is equal to 5, the absolute value of 5 being 5. But if I plug this equation in, let's see what's going to happen. If I put 3 plus negative 4 thirds back into my equation, negative 4 thirds plus 1, so if you want to type that into your calculator, you're going to get 1.66 7 and negative 1.667, right? The reason why this isn't going to be negative, well, it's an absolute value, first of all, so you can't have a negative number unless there's a negative outside the absolute value. But the other reason is because this number is smaller than 3, right? And so you're going to have 1.667 regardless. Now, <coughs> uh, 
that can't be a solution is so that 1.667 is not equal to negative 1.667 so our final solution must be 2. Okay so these are two ways that we can solve our absolute value problems algebraically. Now there's gonna there's one more way to solve this algebraically and I'm gonna show it to you right now okay so if you need to pause uh, take a look through um, the different steps that we just took for both of these sol solutions and methods and then go right ahead okay but I'm gonna move on so this video is not too long okay so for equations containing a single absolute value expressions such as the one we just we the, the two we previously just looked at there is an alternative method which can be used. When we asked the question, is the solution in the subdomain, the answer was sometimes yes and sometimes no. Okay, so for example, uh, I kind of skipped that, but this, this was in the subdomain, yes, and that was also yes, right? That was less than negative three halves, and this was over negative three halves. And then down here, this would be no, and this would be yes, right? That is not in the subdomain, and neither, well, this one was, okay? So, but this is the reason why there is only one solution. So if that's the case, if there is only one solution, then the alternative method is to solve the two pieces of the absolute value equation without considering the subdomains. However, this means that the solution needs to be checked or verified to eliminate incorrect answers. Okay, so um, <coughs> what you need to do then is consider the equation 3 plus x and 2x plus 1. That's the one we already looked at. What we would do is write this as a piecewise equation. And so remember, when we're writing things as a piecewise equation, it could look something like this. So f of x is equal to... 3 plus x and negative 3 minus x and that is if 3 plus x is greater or is uh, greater than or equal to 0 and if 3 plus x is less than 0 not greater than less than 0 okay so that's the first part the second part set each of the expressions from a equal to 2x plus 1 and solve for x in each case and then verify so 3 plus x is equal to 2x plus 1 <coughs> um, if I'm solving this it's going to be 2 is equal to x x is equal to 2 and we, we pretty much verified this last time and so this is just kind of showing you the breakdown of the steps so I did verify this earlier on remember that when I put the second part of my equation in I had negative uh, if I have negative 3 plus x is equal to 2x plus 1 if I plug uh, if I organize that's going to be negative 4 and that's going to be 3x x is equal to negative 4 thirds All right so that's what we got and then we, we would have to verify both of these solutions and we're going to find that we'll have to reject this one here Okay, just like w what we did over here in this question. Exact same thing. Now, class example number five. Solve this solution by graphing. Okay, so if I have x squared minus 9 this time, and that is equal to 7, we're going to have the same thing looking like the w and I want to so that's going to look something like this and this is at uh, y is equal to 7 and then it looks something like that and so we want to find out where these values of x are going to be and if I if I trace it I'm going to get Okay, so I get my x values are equal to plus minus 1.41 and plus and minus 4. Okay, so one, one, negative 1 1.41, positive 1 1.41, negative 4, and positive 4. Now, 
solve the equation algebraically. So if we're solving this algebraically, x minus 9 is equal to 7, then I'm going to have, if I add 7 to both sides, it's going to be x squared is equal to 16. If I take the square root of both sides, then I'm going to get x is equal to plus and minus 4. Perfect. Now let's see this other side. Negative x squared plus 9 because we changed the signs, right? Absolute value. Um, now what I'm going to do is switch, switch both these. So I'm going to subtract 7 from this side, which is going to be 2. And then I'm going to bring this negative x squared over here to give me positive x squared. And then I have to take the square root of both of those again. That's going to give me plus minus the square root of 2 is equal to x. Now if I take the square root of 2, I get 1.41. And I had plus and minus 1.41. All right, so it checks out and it works. Now usually what you need to do though is verify that those are the actual solutions, but I'm not going to do that. Okay, so that is it.